John Mayer's back for an encore. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah. Do you think it's cool? Yeah. I don't really care. What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. Nice to meet you. I'm back, mother... It's just three weeks after you've already been. Shut up. Uh, what's up, Watch Fam? I'm Michael. I'm having a bad hair day. I need a haircut. Oh, I think it's cute. Oh, thanks. Anyways, today is... Um... How about... What's one of... Name... Don't, don't go nuts. Don't... What's one of your favorite videos on YouTube? I'm not saying what's your favorite. You're going to go to anxiety attack. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panic attack. Name a video on YouTube that you really like that a lot of people haven't seen. Mm. I know it. I know you couldn't answer it. <laughs> I know it. It's like no. when I tell Michael, name one movie. Michael's like, ah. Uh, I'm like, I don't think I've seen one. Yeah. Oh, sorry I asked. <laughs> oh, my I God. No I'm so sorry I asked. Um, hmm. Okay, mine yeah, is... You, uh, you so, order first. You uh, order first. I'll be one second. <laughs> <laughs> should I be bad or should I be good? What, what, should I get a salad or a steak? The waiter's like, I don't uh, just get both. I don't, it, I don't care. Uh, anyway. You um, say yours. I, uh, so I, as, as Michael knows, I have like the same playlist of like sad acoustic music yeah. um, from like sixth grade that I still listen to every day. Yeah. And I think it's because it reminds me of, of all the hate I had, the despair I had in sixth grade. Yeah, right. And one of my favorite uh, videos on YouTube is, uh, is Bonnie Vare. It is a rendition of um, uh, For Emma. It's a tune by Bonnie Vare. I'm just and it's, keep going. And it's in it's in like a hallway, and uh, it's 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 really really good. Put the link down below. It's it, it only it starts like a minute in the video, but uh, if you like like you know sad love music, you know, yeah. put that on. Get ready. Or if you want to you know write major ads for large companies. <laughs> yeah, Christian writes sad. these ads really upset. Anyways. Today, oh, what is my favorite video? I don't know. The, the same. That yeah. one. <laughs> that yeah. one. Today, we are talking about, really, Omega, but we want to start off with John Mayer's G-Shock, get some thoughts. Omega released some new Constellation colors. Sizing, we'll get into sizing and how I think it kind of is the, not golden handcuffs, but just handcuffs for almost every modern watch brand. Mm. And then, you've obviously seen the Omega Speedmaster Chronoscope. I remember the first time my dad told me the idea of golden handcuffs. He goes, you know, my boss wants to leave, but he has golden handcuffs. So I said, what does that mean? He goes, well, you pay him so much money that he has to stay. I said, that sounds pretty good. That doesn't sound like a handcuff. That doesn't sound like a handcuff. Have you ever been to jail? Yeah, Have you yeah. been arrested before? It's like the guy that makes $5 million a year but doesn't want to quit because the money's good. It's like, well, how much money do you need if yeah. you've been there for 10 years? Yeah, right. Just quit. What's Just the, go. What's the deal, yo? You're yo? fine. Yeah, what's yeah. your spending like? And I was like, yeah, he wants to quit, but he won't. He's golden handcuffs. I'm like, Handcuffs. <laughs> Sounds like he has a yacht. A uh, yacht. Yeah. Actually, a yacht. yacht. Oh, yeah. Nick. Uh, salute. All right. Before we get into the next subject, a quick uh, shop uh, talk. You're yep. wearing what? I'm wearing a lovely Omega Seamaster chubby case, which, in my opinion, takes a strap better than any. But you're a chubby chaser. Whoa. 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 Yes. And I even wear it on my wrist. Do you ever seen Ray, the Ray Charles movie? Mm, no, but neither did he. <laughs> Whoa, this guy's got it today. He's in the film, he would feel <laughs> women's wrists to like see what their body was like mm. and feel like the fat content. I guess you could tell that, yeah. A wrist is a good one. And there's this whole, well, I can't spoil it. Was he picky? Yeah. One of my favorite jokes is uh, Larry David always says, you know, because he's not the best looking guy in the world, but he's very picky. So he tells a joke about Quasimodo, you know, Quasimodo in high school. And, uh, you know, Quasimodo's like, you know, this high school. He's Quasimodo. And, and he's Quasimodo. And, and his friends go, you know, trying to make him feel better. He said, Quasi, there's a girl in my science class. She's, you know, she thinks she'd like you. You know, she's a nice girl. I, I talk to her all the time. I, think, I really think you got a shot with this girl. And he would go, is she pretty? <laughs> no, you love that joke. The second I made any comment about anything, I was like, "The joke's coming." It's I know. I love that joke so much. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Norm McDonald joke about a welder. Oh, good God! <laughs> no, I would never. Um, but yeah. I am wearing the Omega Seamaster chubby case. What are you yeah. wearing? 
I'm wearing a Cartier Santos uh, Carré. One is available in the shop right now. By the time I see this, I don't know if it is. But uh, in the in the TNH shop, we, we constantly have you know uh, really mostly Rolex and Omega uh, Cartier when we can get them. Cartier very hard to come by. So if you do find one, you know scoop it up. Yeah. Um, but Rolex and Omega is really what we specialize in. Um, take a look uh, in the shop. I've personally curated all of these watches. I curate. Curate's a fancy word for I looked at a million watches and bought you know a quarter of a million watches and mm -hmm. and you know. Oh, and uh, and or really less than that. I I really did the math one time. I I buy less than ten percent of what I see. Oh, which is pretty cool. How many yeah. watches have you sold in seven years? Oh my God, I don't know. Uh, you know, again, we we you know, we never really went big time as far as uh, value. We, I, I was never selling hundreds and hundreds of thousands yeah, right, of dollars of in pieces. But you know, generally our specialty has been sub 10,000 and we've sold over 10 million dollars in, in seven years wow. so yeah more yeah more than that yeah wow. so yeah we've, you know it's been pretty cool that's cool um, yeah it is really cool um, but yeah anyway um, Rolex Omega please go take a look yes. uh, fantastic stuff we also just recently restocked with uh, with some watch rolls the Coronado roll uh, in a couple of different colors and, and, and our John Rousseau rolls as well so it's really good stuff please go uh, go take a look and treat yourself it, treat is, yourself. it is January I it mean, is January and you know what frankly between you and me we both know the odds that your wife got you something what you wanted slim for your yeah. birthday she bought you a new sweater Put it on, kiss a cheek, and tell her do better. Uh, I don't it's Kanye get it. again. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I, I stopped listening to Kanye as a college dropout. So get up, I get down. I just up, know. I, I know you love Kanye, but yeah. I, but you you love two albums of Kanye and the rest is just whoa, 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 wait, whoa, 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 fuck you. Yeah. I, I, you know, uh, 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 um, late registration. Okay. College dropout. Graduation and frankly, I like Eight Oh Eight. I like Eight Oh Eight. So, so that's four albums that I can and I can almost recite every word of those four albums. Almost. Late registration, I'm a little bit spotty on. That's right. Um, but but I'm pretty fucking good. Yeah. Okay. Send a send of flowers. We the roses. <laughs>I actually like this one a lot. Well, Rewind, John Mayer did a G-Shock with Hodinkee a, yes. a year or two ago. Yep. What was that watch? That was like... That was the same watch, but in a gray color, and the buttons were like a It was teal. like blue, there was yellow, yeah. Yeah. I uh, like that a lot, actually. I like that, too. I like it a lot. Yeah. The one thing that I found kind of corny is in this ad, it says, this case is going to look better with time. I think leather looks better with time, no, denim, that, rubber gets dirty. Yes. Yeah. I would be very surprised if that watch looks better a year from now. I Yeah, I have no idea how that's going to happen. If no. you've seen any clear plastic swatch or anything, they turn yellow and the rubber gets like creaky. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to age beautifully, but no. I do think they nailed it. It's a little on the nose too that John Mayer has to pull from keyboards every time in order to get a collaboration watch. Oh, like this does is he? this is based off of another keyboard that he likes. Okay, well, whatever. Maybe that's his thing. I would buy a watch if John Mayer just said, "This is what I think looks pretty." Yeah, this is great. Yeah, you know, a white G-Shock, and this is a little off-white cream. But I'm gonna start rocking that because it's bold enough. Yeah, and it's kind of like a ceramic AP. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this watch was retail for what? Do you know, hundred eighty-five. And what are they going for already on eBay? <laughs> Five hundred and fifty dollars. Our good friend. Uh, TJ actually bought one. And Did then he? he said immediately on... Did he flip it already? No. He's keeping it. He's keeping it. Of course he's keeping Guy, it. He's so rich. He's so rich. TJ. TJ. Mwah. TJ is one of our best friends. Yes, he is. I mentioned him in the last... Well, now three lives ago. And if TJ's listening, then Haley's in the bathroom. Hi, Haley! What's up, Haley? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Me and Haley were in Guam. <laughs> that makes no sense to anybody else. No. But, um... Yeah, he got it, and he said immediately he could just. He was looking on eBay as all the watches were flooding eBay, yes. and prices just going up and up and up and up and yes. up. So it's kind of an ultimate flip. That's probably how John Mayer makes the bulk of his money. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what? I, I will tell a small TJ story. Be, you know, to get a little context to you guys that were just confused. Uh, T, TJ. TJ is a friend of ours for a year now. Um, Michael and I recently went to his wedding. TJ is, a, is an American hero. Uh, TJ. TJ serves this country. Um, and 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 the reason why I'm bringing this up is because uh, a couple of a couple of weeks ago, um, he he he's wanted to buy a Rolex from an authorized dealership for a long time, yep. uh, and it's almost impossible to do. 
And uh, an AD, um, basically, you know, I mean, I used the word jump the list, um, which I suppose some people are going to get sour in their underwear about, you know, <laughs> they're going to get all their cr- panties all crinkled up. But the reality <laughs> no, is, I like sour you know, in their underwear. Sour in underwear, you know. The reality is, uh, an AD did allocate him a watch, not as just a thank you for serving the country. It's this different thing. I mean, it, it, that too, probably. But because an AD identified this person as someone who was a genuine watch guy um, that was not looking to a watch for a profit. Uh, an AD's job is to make sure that the watches get in the hands of the right people. Mm-hmm. And yes, in theory, TJ did skip the line. Or really, actually, no, to correct myself, um, he didn't because the AD uh, uh, has the regular list and the yep. order supply, mm-hmm. but keeps always keeps a couple of watches, and it was like, it was a Submariner, keeps a couple of watches in the back for special circumstances. So it really yep. didn't even skip the line, really. Yep. That watch was already put aside. Um, anyway, I just think that's really interesting. I think it's very cool. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool that, that an AD <clears throat> successfully did their job. Right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, they did their job, and this guy treasures this watch and takes this watch all over the world as he serves this country. And I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So while yes, I hate all of the uh, aftermarket bullshit, uh, just like you guys do, um, I, I think that that was a really cool story. It made me very happy for him. If you meet DJ, you would hate him. Tall, great looking. Oh, TJ, Jack, I hate being American hero. Guy. Yeah, he's Incredible gorgeous. Incredible style. He's gorgeous. He's, <laughs> he's six. He's six foot what? He's six foot. I, six foot. 13. Six foot thirteen. He's ripped. He's just huge. He's gorgeous. I hate him so and, much. And on top know. of all that, a legitimate American hero. And a legitimate American hero who could break anyone in half. Yeah. Some one guy's at and home right now. He's like overweight. He's forty five. He goes, Oh yeah, I'd like to see him break me in half. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you just lost a viewer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, TJ will yeah. find you. Let me go cry. <laughs> Let me go cry in my big watch collection. <laughs> Let me go cry in my vintage BMW. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this person doesn't even Cam. 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 Omega released a few colors for their Omega Constellation Glowmaster. And we'll get into the real thoughts on this in a second. But check this out. They have green. Now they have red. Mm. And I forgot to include the Sedna one, but they have one completely Sedna gold, including the dial. So I've had one of these watches for a while, and I've pulled it off the website and put it back on and pulled it back. Blue dial. uh, Gray dial, blue strap with blue uh, uh, writing. And I love this watch. I've literally pulled it off the site to wear it for a couple of weeks because I like it that much. This is an incredibly high quality watch, Mm -hmm. uh, the Globemaster, particularly the the annual calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, we have one available in the Theo and Harris watch shop, uh, box papers, the whole bit. And um, and I've literally, I've I've actually worn it for weeks at a time, um, which I haven't done in in, in probably a month and a half. The last time I like I wore it for a week, mm-hmm. but I love that watch so much. Portions are perfect. Uh, the watch is perfect. It's a perfect watch. Wow, this is going to make this next discussion interesting. Yeah, the bezel on this green one yeah. is tungsten carbide. They're all tungsten carbide. Now it's said that they do too. Oh well, but I mean, all the oh, white oh, metal, oh, all yeah, the white yeah, yeah, metal yeah, yeah. ones are, t- are tungsten. That's really cool. It's v- incredibly cool. It's fresh. It's, no, it's not really cool. It's incredibly cool. Sorry, sorry. Oh, oh my God! It is incredibly cool. That's what you said. It's incredibly cool, but also very frustrating. By or incredibly frustrating that Omega is the biggest watch company that does this, and not everybody chases that specific thing. Do you know what I mean? Meaning taking all these cool materials and doing all this like revolutionary yes. stuff. And it doesn't really extend to Rolex is the obvious example, but other brands of that caliber that mm-hmm. could also do cool stuff and really push everybody forward. Yeah, well, I mean, I was you know talking I mean? about this t- today with a watch industry, you know, uh, a leader, an executive, and we were yeah. talking about he doesn't work for Omega, and he was just saying like, Fuck, man, can you believe how well Omega has done in the last couple of years? How much they earned that? They've earn their keep man yes i mean they introduce new interesting you know things uh, uh objective improvements technology um uh, improvements in size there are brands and I, I can't get into it whatever but there are brands that are so ignorant and stubborn that they refuse to give people what they want right now yeah when it yeah. comes to like rolex like well they can kind of do that when it comes to mid-level brands it makes me sad when they, because yeah, I take it a little, I take it very fucking seriously. Yeah. Okay. And personally. Because yeah, very personally. Because it makes me sad when a mid-level brand or or whatever um, chooses not to give the people, chooses not to listen to the people. And by the way, oftentimes, most of the time, the people's request absolutely fits in line with the brand's history and heritage. Is it a yep. pure, They're asking for the correct trajectory. Usually, the audience is more of a purist than the brand. Hundred percent. The brand has very, and mm-hmm. I don't want to say the brand has strict rules. The people behind the brand. So, so here's one way you can look at it. Like, oh no, well they didn't make the watch you want grow up. Tell that 
to the person they laid off last quarter because the brand doesn't make enough money to keep them on. Exactly. Tell that to the 43-year-old yeah, yeah, yeah. dad that has to go find another f***ing job now because you refuse to release the watch in the size everyone wants. Yeah, right. Like, that's right. disgusting to me. These brands are, a lot of them are just so pig-headed. We see, it's interesting, I when I was flipping watches, oh, gee, actually a giant you, mother wine comes up from the reservoir. <laughs> that's nice to say. That's, I have a reservoir of wine inside of me. That's funny. And if I did, would, would it still be there? Would I have dragged it, right? <laughs> I would have, have tapped in about an hour ago. This reminds me of someone that I was driving with them one day. And it was like 20 minutes while we is started this, driving. Is this me? No, this is oh, different. Okay. But they were like, I hey, cracked open a beer while driving. I do not do I that. I would never do that. Never. And if I did, it wouldn't be in my car. Yeah. No, but they they were talking and uh, they are like, well, I have an emergency water in the back. And 20 minutes later, they are like, can you hand me the emergency water? And I was like, what's the emergency? And they are like, well, I'm thirsty. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not really an emergency water. <laughs> That's funny. That's silly. But when I was flipping watches, what I would always say when Omega came up was, they're the brand that is constantly focused on progress in all directions. Mm. Other brands do slight iterations because it's working. Keep mm -hmm. doing it, it's working. Omega just seems to always be like, well, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. Yep. If there is this technology available, we're going to put it in our movement. Yep. It's tested, obviously, but yep. we're going to make the movement better immediately because yep. we can do it. Exactly. Epitome of when I first started here, we were talking about there are people that save their best ideas until they get successful. Yep. So they never get successful. Yep. Versus people that use every idea or every product that they make as their best idea. Yep. And they know they have to come up with another one yep. before the next release. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that go. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. I mean, there, there, there are projects that we have that I say, okay, I could sell that for I mean, $50,000, you know? Yep. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I could probably sell that for one hundred and fifty in, in a year and a half or in two years. I know that. I know yeah, I can right, do that. Right. Um, but then you're like, you know what? I'll never, you know, you'll never get to that level if you don't. You save your all bones. your good ideas for when you yeah. get like successful. It you doesn't never, make sense. You never you make your it. bones. Yeah. That's it. It's, you know, and, and, and that's, um, that's the reality of it. That's the know? T. That's the T. Here's the bag. Talking about Omega, now it gets interesting because I was going to say, I love. The Globemaster, but I think this is very reminiscent of the original, con well, not the original, the Pi Pan constellation from Omega. Bigger. Everything is bigger. Thicker, wider, everything like that. I wanted to ask you if you thought, because of modern day watch sizes, Omega and other brands, not really Omega at all, but have to sacrifice some of their proportions in order to fit that size. For sure. I mean, you know, we've talked about before, you know, plenty of watches, like the Speedmaster being one that, this is a 42 millimeter watch. You can't make it in 40. Yeah. You can't. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, the 40 is the direction of a lot of watches now. Mm -hmm. They will not do that. I genuinely don't believe they'll do that. Now, the Speedmaster at 44 in those special, uh, special editions, but those other, yep. it's fucking great as well. Yeah. Right? Y sometimes you've got a little bit room up. But not downs, but you know, and, and keeping proportions up is very important. Yep. Omega does that. Um, a lot of brands, a lot of brands don't. Um, yeah, yeah. P period. I think that there are a lot of again. It's 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 a little bit difficult to talk about certain watches. Like like for example. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I don't want to end up on anybody. List. Yeah, yeah that's right. the reality. I just mean it, the, the general like No, but but I'm also never gonna I'm also you know, my point was I'm never gonna lie about it. Yeah, I just I just hate to hate again when you when you shit on people you, you jeopardize their jobs, you know. But yeah, right. but the reality is like there are sports watches, like let's say from Blanc Pond, mm -hmm. right? The fifty fathoms. Those watches, they're too big. Yeah. Right? They're, yeah. They're too big. The proportions are wrong. The watches look empty. Make the watch smaller. The Blanc Pond fifty fathoms, and I'll let you finish after this, yeah. has probably the best bezel in watches. In dive watches, yeah. period. It's period. the original bezel. It's, it's, sapphire it's the original for a reason. F***ing real. It's a great yeah. watch. Incredible watch. Way better than a sub. Mm -hmm. Way better. Yeah. And yet it's unwearable. It's unwearable. The proportions are wrong. And, and, and I'm sorry, and not just in size, but also proportions wise, it's just too big. It's empty. The sub is perfect at 40 or 41. Yep. And that's that's basically what I was going to say. How many times Hallelujah. do we get a watch or see a watch and we're like, it's too big. You just, it's too big. Yeah. And the question is, I guess it's an opinion. If these brands could shrink their watch to a 38 or a 40 even, for a lot of these brands, because they go 42, 44, mm -hmm. are they not doing it because of personal brands? Or is it because we're so locked in and sales are going to go that further down if it's not a big watch? I think, uh, I, re I really don't know. I think that, you know, my opinion is, and, and this is not, 
this is this is a suspicion. It is not founded. I do not know if this is true or not. Mm-hmm. My suspicion is that a lot of these brands, not Omega, Omega does this very well, yeah. but a lot of these brands simply do not practice good market research. They just don't. They're mm-hmm. going with gut because they're Swiss and they're arrogant or whatever it is. I don't know. Again, it's going to offend somebody. I don't care. Yeah. That's the reality, mm-hmm. right? Everyone's like, oh, I, I, I know, I know, I know. Well, you, you don't. No. Yeah. Okay. Right. How right. about you? How about you? You know, do some market research. Or you knew five years ago. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. You hire a firm. You learn some. You you learn something about your buyer pool, um, and then you say, okay, well, uh, let's do another round. But but now with with something closer to whatever you take and learn, and that's a little bit far from your DNA. Well, how can we alter it? How can we bring that a little closer back? And then let's do you know. Yeah. You you can. It's a process. You know. It's a process. Yeah. And a lot of artists. Um, people who you know design watches, uh, people who uh, people who you know develop advertisements, mm-hmm. they're that they're artists, right? Yeah. Um, but they often forget about efficacy. They forget about conversion, and that is very uh, troubling to me. A lot of stuff I'm personal. On, I'm, I'm on a I'm on a high, I'm on a soapbox today. Yeah, you're going. As you say, a lot I'm of stuff hitting you personally today. Because it's because you guys are seeing this after Christmas. It's Christmas season, baby, and everything's personal. Everything's perfect. Hey. <laughs> that is literally on that. That is on some Christmas movie VHS. It's Christmas season and everything's personal. Hundred percent. That is the tagline. Yeah, exactly. And someone picks up the thing and starring Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. I love Vince Vaughn. I know you do. I Christian, love. Christian was trying to explain to me the brilliance of Vince Vaughn when we were in Miami. Yeah. And the brilliant part of all of this was you simultaneously explaining it perfectly, but not saying anything. Yes. And you're like the brilliance of Vince Vaughn is when Vince Vaughn is. Vince no Vaughn. longer Vince Vaughn, but also more Vince Vaughn than he's ever been. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so what's you like the this l- l- big fucking bear with these big fucking claws? And sh- you saw Swingers, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you see Swingers? Yeah. You didn't see Swingers. No, what is wrong with you? I don't. I've been trying to it's find a out. a brilliant for... movie. Oh, my God. Oh, look, Why? What is Vince Vaughn doing in that movie? He's just being Vince he's Vaughn. Being Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Ad lib for an hour and a half. It's so good. I, I I sometimes can't believe that John Favreau is so brilliant because he's so unassuming. John Favreau, it, it looks like a dud, you know. But uh, or he behaves. Maybe if, maybe that's his character. Maybe dud it definitely is, has to be right. Yeah. Maybe he's not a dud. He clearly he's not. Guys. Genius it ha- if, and and incredibly successful. If you haven't looked up what he has done, look it up. Pause this video and look it up right now, because you'll be like, Elf, what? Iron Man, <laughs> Swingers, everything. Yeah, and he usually plays the idiot cameo. cameo yeah, right. So you're like, wow, this guy's barely Makes holding a on. Fortune. To yeah, guy's he's worth a dumb ton of money. So he's worth is, even more money than you are right now. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not the one making movies for a living. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll gloss over this really quick, but the size thing that I was talking Quickly, about... Quickly, it's an adverb. What? Dude, adverbs don't exist. <laughs> I subtract I did that to a girl on a date one time. How'd it go? Uh, <laughs> not well. See, the, so why do you think you're smarter than me? I said, why did you think that me correcting you meant that I was smarter than you? If anything, the fact that you're not able to take criticism means that I'm smarter than you. <laughs> She's like, do you want to go for a second date? You're like, absolutely. 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 I think I love you. Absolutely. Um... I, I have a, 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 a my best friend. I, listen, it's it's a party. I'm back. I'm back, He's baby. He's back, baby. <laughs> One of my, my best friend, uh, Sam. We grew up together. Right. Um, Sam is a is you know, he's like you ever see Goodwill Hunting? He's like the guys that he's like his friends. You know, I'm Will Hunting, <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he's the guy that 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 will do anything for you. You know, yeah. I love this guy. Um, but he can be simple. You know, he, he, he we grew up three blocks from each other, and and he we have totally like <laughs> like he, he says windmill it's a not a windmill it's a windmill, windmill. he's yeah. a little dull um, you know he's simple I, I love my friend Sam um, Sam will never see this Sam will see this really uh, yeah probably um, but the point I'm trying to get at is um, is every time he goes on a date you know what I mean? no I every just thought it would have been hilarious if you've lost your point yeah, yeah. through the insult Every time he goes on a date with a new girl, and he Sam is Sam's incredible with women way better than I am yeah uh, he goes on a date with with a girl and uh, he, he'll call me up, and we, we super hype up like I do to you. Yeah, of course, right? Of course. I'm like, tell me more, tell me more. Like this is like, did he you know, put up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put up, up, up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and he goes, yeah, like she, she, you know, uh, you know, she wore this, and she talked about this, and she's this, she's Irish, blah blah. She's from North Jersey, blah 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, do you, do you, you know, do you think? And he's like, what? I'm like, do you think that she's you love her? He goes, bro, I just met her a minute ago. I don't even know this girl. Yeah. I'm like, no, I know that. I'm, 
I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is, you got inside of you, man. Do you love her? Do you love her? Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. Dude, no. I, how could I love her? I don't even know her. I'm like, dude, you, chill out. Yeah. Some things you just know. Right. Right? Yeah. I know I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. There's no evidence of that. No. I know that. 100%. Do you love this girl? And in, he's like. In your gut. Maybe I do. <laughs> I do this to him after tells every tells single f***ing date he goes on. And he never gets that I'm with him. He's like, never. That's why I love my friends. Him. It did go well. Wow. I think I love her. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then she breaks up with him because he, yeah, he says, I love you. Yeah. Second date, about to order at it, some Italian restaurant in town. I love you. I'll have the... Nothing, actually. I'm not even hungry. I'm just full of love. I'm just full of love. This is just a stupid side note, but I've recently been thinking this and seeing it on Instagram a lot. I really love the Seamaster 300M. Yeah. Better than the sub. Really? Like, if someone said... Well, from a financial standpoint, I would take the sub. But if someone said... You could have either he one of these. He means resale value. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. But if someone said you'd have this or this, I think I'd go with that. Well, it's fucking gorgeous. Yeah. And yeah I've, I've just been watch. seeing pictures on Instagram of like it at certain angles, and I've been like, wow, that is great. The only thing that that watch is missing for me yeah. is like the bracelet from the Bond watch. Mm -hmm. That mesh I, yeah. is, is so nasty, it's disgusting. I will... <laughs> <laughs> it's wow. covered in shit and yeah it's this is putrid it's putrid i will say that the bracelet is definitely the weakest point for me especially the giant clasp but i've just been looking at it recently and been like wow i really love that watch love that watch absolutely love it finally yeah. this is a great watch this is the ending note well besides oh the chronoscope i oh love the God. chronoscope <laughs> this is just i'm just playing this so up at the good. end it's a, if, if you know about omega you know about the chronoscope but i was just on their site and i was like yeah Oh my God! Yeah, the chronoscope is incredible. What an animal! It's an animal. Uh, so uh, I was with Omega a couple like a month ago, and I got to see all the chronoscopes like in a line, you know, in order. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so surprised. So I didn't actually like this watch in the photos. Um, I really? really? Yeah, like these ones. Yeah, they didn't make any sense to me. Oh. I was like, okay, well, they took a really old like like telemeter kind of style you yep. know and they put it on a watch that was manufactured in the you know it will make it in the 60s like the, yep, it made yep. no sense uh i was wrong logically it was a perfect unobjectionable uh meshing of history um but from an actual like physical pov it's an incredible watch to hold yeah it's, it's bigger than a speedy pro it's huge it's huge yeah. it's it wears incredibly well on my wrist you would be blown away if really? you watching my wrist. Yep. Really? I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the fuck? Why does this watch yeah. look so good on my wrist? It's unreal. And, and plus, uh, uh, Omega Sedna Gold is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, you know, Sedna Gold um, is named after a planet, a red planet. What's the name of the planet? Sedna. But uh, yeah, I love I love the chronoscope. Um, yeah, Omega's on the up. I I'd buy an Omega in two seconds. I'm, I actually want to buy an Omega now. I mean, yeah, you're actually trying to buy an Omega. I know. I was trying to buy a no no Omega. I was trying to buy the uh, the Apollo, yeah, the yellow gold speed master with the red bezel. You know, it's a big deal I when know. the guy that makes ads for Omega can't get the Omega he I wants, know. and Omega's like, oh, I know. Sorry. the way they kind of and this just shows you like shows you, like Omega's a really good partner of ours. Omega, we're really oh, good friends. Omega's our boy. Omega's we're boys. our boy. We're very good friends with Omega. And I said to Omega, hey, I'd like this watch. And at first they giggled, and then you know. Because you, you yeah. know what it is? Because jerk offs say they want to spend forty thousand dollars all the time. They don't actually mean it. Are you a jerk off? No, no. no. But the point is, people are like, "Oh yeah, I want to buy that watch." Yeah, well, right. come on. You really gonna buy it? Like, cool. are you gonna make me go out of my way to like make this happen? And you're gonna out? Like, don't do that. Yeah. So, so I, I was like, no, I, I'm serious. I would actually love that watch. You know. Yeah. And they were like, oh, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well. Uh, uh, no, first of all. But if you really wanted to make this happen, we could make it happen for you. You know, through another deal, through a deal, they would, they would figure it out. They, they, they would, they would, they would find the watch, right? They'd find an available watch. And I was like, you know what? Do I really want to use my favor with Omega <laughs> on, get on getting a watch? No, right. no, 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 right. no, 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 no. Uh, and the truth is, the the premium is only not only the premium is like eight thousand dollars, and um, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, but as far as oh, I sound like an idiot, but as far as premiums go today, it's not 
that much money. Yeah. You know, you've got, speaking of premiums, you see the, the, the Tiffany Dial Oyster Perpetuals right now? They're yeah. going for $25,000. That's a $5,000 watch, $6,000 watch. Wow. Yeah. Imagine. So I just feel like now I would not pay an $8,000 premium for the $35,000 watch. I would not do that. Yeah, right. Um, but I also feel like, okay, I kind of get it. Like, whatever. It's 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 still eight grand. I could still get an incredible... I, I think about all the incredible watches I can get for eight grand. I'm like, you know, eight, I really want the JLC Reverso Moon uh, Duo. That's that's 12, eight, almost 12. I could just get, I could get the... F- you know what I can get? You, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you start doing like you know, financial gymnastics, you know? Yeah. But, um, but I, I couldn't imagine spending $25,000 watch it's a six thousand dollar watch not so. even to mention premium I gas jericho why, why are you bringing up my premium <laughs> gas <laughs> we don't have to even the car doesn't even take it <laughs> I, I was in i was in la for it for a, an event and uh i don't like california I, you know, I i saw i saw annie hall very young too young uh, too young too young for a boy to handle you got way too existential at way the i really actually did i'm telling yeah. you like really i got really up. Um, I, I started listening to Annie Hall. I started listening to Bob Dylan the same week. How horrible! Like, yes, how can they do yeah. this to a child? You yeah. Know? Um, anyway, uh, um, I've hated LA since then, and um, I was in LA for an event. We we're having a blast. You know, a bunch of guys. It was a ton of ton of fun. A lot of YouTube guys, and uh, we passed the gas station, and it was gas was six dollars a gallon, and I said. You guys, and they were like, "Oh, it's so Jersey." Yeah, we were cracking yeah. up. You know, that's they crazy. Da- Danny and yeah, you know, yeah. a lot, a lot of people. And it was a blast. It was a blast. I, I went off. It, it became really funny when I went on about the gas for five minutes after that. I, you know, it's, I just wouldn't stop talking about the gas. <laughs> wow, it's been so cool to be there. <laughs> Oh, that was so fun. That's like, that was fun. I'd love to be part of an inside joke. Uh, yeah, oh, that's an inside joke. I'd love to be a part of one. Someday. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> anyway, guys, hey, you want to tell them a funny story about us? Do you have one? No. No. I don't have a single one. <laughs> All happy, business. Happy Wednesday, happy ladies Wednesday. and gentlemen. Happy, happy Wednesday. Uh, 97% men and 3% gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, or really, 97, 3%, 7%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot, boop, 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 boop.